Glory to God. Deliverance. 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 Every believer is required to deliver. It's a commandment of God. We are called to be deliverers. Amen? But first we must be delivered. <laughs> Turn to Psalm 91. Deliverance is for every believer. Does everybody get it? Psalm 91. Glory to God. Yes, we're going there. Hallelujah. Deliverance. In verse 1. Let's read it together. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. So listen, if you're dwelling there, what are you worried about? Praise be to God. What can man do to you? What can a demon do to you? Hello. Deliverance. Go to verse 3. It says what? Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl, fowler and from the prevalence of pestilence. Wow. It says surely he will what? Deliver you. Listen, if you know the deliverer, that means you're a fruit of his deliverance so that you are to deliver. Hmm. If he is the high priest, that means you're a priest. Does everybody get it? Aren't you the offspring of Christ? Praise God. Go to verse 9. Because you have made the Lord who is your refuge or my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Because you made that choice that you're dwelling in this place with Him. It says, No evil shall befall you. So the only reason why evil befalls pe people and, and hinders them is because they're not dwelling in that secret place. The devil's pushed them out of position. Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. So we obviously know that plagues are demonic. Does everybody get it? It says, for he'll give you his angels a charge over you and keep you in all of your way. Wow. Did you ever notice that the secret place of the Most High is known as the most holy place in the tabernacle of God? And you know what's there? Two angels. They're on the mercy seat, aren't they? So when you're dwelling in that place, when you go, there's two angels with you. They'll bear you up. But if you're not dwelling in that place, you go and the angels stay. Hello? Okay, let's go on. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall what? Tread upon the lion and the cobra. And the young lion and the what? You shall trample under your foot. Hello? That means you have dominion over all demonic activity. They don't have dominion over you. And because you have set your love upon the Lord, therefore... He will del what? Deliver you. Praise God. That's why the word says, um, all things work to the good to those who what? Love the Lord. So even when you blow it, you fumble, you fall, you backslide, if you, if you love the Lord, all things will work to the good when you get back. Amen? God will turn everything to the good. I will set him on high because he knows my name. Glory to God. He'll exalt you. And he will let you know, use, use his name. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. He will call upon me and I will what? Answer him. I will be with him in time of trouble. And I will what? Deliver him and honor him. Why? Because you're dwelling and you have relationship and fellowship. And you're staying in the secret place with him. In other words, you're not doing it in your own strength. You're not yielding your own ways. You're yielding in the ways of the Lord. With long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. The main drift of this is that God has given me and you authority over powers of darkness and he will deliver us. It says he will deliver us. Does everybody understand that? In Proverbs 21, 31, it says deliverance is of the Lord. So the Lord is the deliverer. Amen? In Psalm 18, 17. Could turn here for a minute. Glory to God. I think people get mixed up that they're the one doing the deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalm 18, 17. It says that the Lord will deliver me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. Wow. And He'll deliver you from the, those who are even stronger than you. Amen. From your enemy. 
everybody get it? Amen. Turn to Psalm 86. We've got to get understanding that Jesus is the deliverer. Psalm 86. In verse 11. Let's read it together. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name or reverence your name. Do you get it? And we got to get to a place where we know that his name is greater than all. We must walk in his truth. Truth is understanding that his name everything must obey. It says verse 12, I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with what? All my heart, and I will glorify your what? Name forever. Do you know that when you use the name of Jesus, you are glorifying Him? Verse 13, read it. For great is your mercy toward me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol, or hell. You have delivered my soul from hell. Amen. Talking about the deliverer. Why? Because walking in truth, right? Asking to be taught his ways. Walking in truth and understanding his name. Praise be to God. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 17. Uh, let's go to verse 16. Let's read it together. At my first offense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. <laughs> verse 17. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Now, wait a minute. It says the Lord strengthened him and stood with him. Also, I was what? Delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And he will deliver us. Of course, he always makes a way of escape for us, doesn't he? If we ain't listening, we don't get delivered. We go in the snap, in the snare of the enemy. In Second Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> oh, we're just buzzing through the word tonight. We might be able to get through all these scriptures. Second Peter chapter 2. Wow. Uh, let's start at verse 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. And he's talking about Lot. In verse 9, read it with me. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and preserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. Wow. So God knows how to deliver us out of temptation. Does everybody get it? He says the godly out of temptation. Well, if you're a child of God, you're godly. You may not feel like it. Sometimes you may not look like it. But in the eyes of God, you're his offspring. And he knows how to deliver you. If you'll let him. 
everybody get it? Hallelujah. So he is the deliverer. In 1 Samuel 17. Praise you, Lord. First Samuel seventeen. First Samuel seventeen and verse thirty seven. Everybody there? Let's read it together. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. You know what he did? He made confession, didn't he? He said, The Lord that delivered me from these places is going to deliver me from this Philistine. He made confession, didn't he? Then King Saul said, well, go ahead. The Lord be with you. Saul wasn't about to go out there and do it. Does everybody get it? Now, the Philistine was nothing but an offspring of a demon. Hello? He was actually, well, an offspring of a fallen angel brought down and so forth. So he was of the giants, which are nothing but offsprings of demons and so forth. I mean, they were, but anyways, we ain't going into that. So we see here that he was an offspring of the fallen angels that had intercourse with um, the women. And these were brought down down the family line. And this Philistine, who was like what we say, he was the David and Goliath event, right? Goliath was a giant. Does everybody get it? He was not normal. Twelve foot was not normal. <laughs> he was a big boy. David was a skinny boy. But he threw a hard rock. <laughs> Praise be to God. But he made confession. He didn't look at what this Philistine looked like. How he was dressed. He made confession that the Lord would deliver him. Not he would deliver himself. Amen. And he kicked butt. In 2 Samuel 22. Praise be to God. In verse 1, 2 second, second Samuel chapter 22 and verse 1. Let's read this together. This is powerful. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of the song. On the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my strength in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation. The stronghold of my refuge. My Savior, you save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Wow. Praise be to God. He knew who his deliverer was. Amen. He knew. Psalm 34. <laughs> Psalm 34.
Psalm 34. In verse 1, 1 through 4. Can we read this, please? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all of my fears. He humbled. He exalted the name. He stayed in that place. Why? Because praise was continually on his mouth, which kept him in the secret place. And he knew that God would deliver him out of all of his fears. Isn't it fear is the first thing that grips people? Fear, doubt, they all shake hands with one another. I sought the Lord and delivered me from all of my fears. Romans 11. Glory, hallelujah. Verse 25, Romans 11, verse 25. Let's read it together. For I did not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. Wow. Now it says the deliverer will come out of Zion. Now Zion is a representation of um, the house of David. So we knew that a deliverer would come out of the house of David, and that's Jesus. Does everybody get it? He is the de deliverer. He came and delivered. Does everybody get it? He is the deliverer. And only He can deliver. Okay? See, the Lord is always looking for someone to deliver. Does everybody get it? He had Moses, who was known as a deliverer. He had Samson. Samuel. Then he chose Saul. Samuel counseled Saul to deliver, didn't he? Then he chose David. And so forth. And he put kings in office to deliver their, his people from bondages. God is looking for those who will be deliverers. Deliverance is an important factor as a believer. Amen. Everyone who becomes a believer is required to be a deliverer. You're required to be a deliverer. Amen. The same thing that Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, is the same thing with you. You're required to be a deliverer. And it's not you that does the delivering. When Moses went to go deliver, it wasn't Moses that delivered. It was God that did the deliverance. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. In Mark 16. Mark 16. 
Praise be to God, our famous verse 17. Let's read it. And these signs will follow those who believe or follow me. Hallelujah. These signs will follow those who what? Follow me. Well, that means if you're following him, you're hiding in the secret place of the Most High. And you will tread upon the lions and cobras. The angels will be with you because you're bringing the Holy of Holies with you. It's no longer you that live, but he that lives in you. It's he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, not you that's greater than he who is in you. <laughs> Hello? It ain't got nothing about you. They're not your gifts. Ain't my gifts. And these signs will follow those who follow me, Jesus said. Why? Because you're, fo you're following Jesus. What's flowing through him is going to flow through you. And what's the first thing? They will... They will what? Cast out demons. Wow. They won't run from demons. They won't bow to demons. They will cast them out. You cannot counsel a demon and you cannot medicate one. You must remove him. Amen. Hello? They will not listen. They can't. Until you take authority over them in the name of Jesus. Does everybody get it? Signs will follow those who follow Jesus. The first sign that will manifest is that you will stay clean from demons Amen. and you'll be able to keep others clean from demons who are willing. Yeah. It is required by every believer to become a deliverer. Mm -hmm. Jesus is no respecter of believers. Amen. Amen. It is required that everyone in this room be a deliverer. It's required by God. His word says, My, these signs will follow those who believe, who follow me. The first thing is they will cast out devils. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Go to Matthew 17. Of course, the second thing says they will pray in tongues. Praise God. Matthew 17. Oh, to God be the glory. Well, we may just get through this. Matthew 17 and verse 14. Hallelujah. And when they had come to the multitude and a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. In other words, he was having seizures. Okay? So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. <coughs> then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long should I bear with you? Bring him to me. I think Jesus was a little frustrated. And Jesus rebuked the demon. It came out of the man. And the child was cured from that very hour. And the disciples were a little flipped. And they came to Jesus privately why couldn't we do this, Lord? And Jesus said, because of your lack of faith. See, it's, he says, because of your unbelief, but it means lack of faith. You know why? They thought it was them casting the demon out. <laughs> the devil will always tell you you're not qualified to. 
But it ain't you. Amen. He's just looking for a donkey with some faith. Does everybody get it? Amen. For surely I say to you, if you have what? Faith as a mustard seed. Now wait a minute. You know how big a mustard seed is? It's a real dinky little seed. Hey, if you have faith to call on the name of the Lord in the morning, you have faith the size of a mustard seed. If you can look up and call on the name of Jesus, you have faith the size of a mustard seed. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will what? Say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be what? Impossible for you. Now, in verse 21 it says, However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now I want you to understand something. That in the original text, this verse is not even there. Does everybody get it? Removing a devil does not require fasting. On most, almost 99% of the... Uh, deliverance. It does not require fasting. Now, it doesn't mean that a, an individual wanting to get released from a demon it suggested that he could fast. Why? Because fasting doesn't move the hand of God. It increases faith. That's what Jesus was saying. That's why the scripture was put in there, but it was not in the original text. It was put in there by the scholars. If you look up the your your thing, it will say, um, "Let's see, omits." It's not even in there. Sometimes I think this is a stumbling block. People think they got to fast forever to cast out a devil. Hmm. <laughs> Does everybody get it? What's fasting do? It increases your faith. Jesus said, "Even the person that needs deliverance." It's good for them to fast. Why? Because it increased their faith. <laughs> that they're going to get freed. That's what fasting is a representation of denying yourself. Does everybody get it? Fasting denies yourself. Why? So you can get out of the way. Because you're not the one casting the devil out. You can't move something in the spirit, in the flesh, with flesh, can you? Nothing fleshy hinders of spirit. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with fasting, because fasting says it breaks the yoke of bondages. What's the yoke of bondages? The things we need to be increased in in faith, knowing that we've been free already. So we need to increase our faith, don't we? The Bible says, stir yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. That's why you hear a lot of praying in the Holy Spirit. You're increasing your faith. But it's not you that's doing the deliverance. Remember, what does faith do? Faith is the connection between the heart of God and the hand of God. That's all. It's not you. Smith Wigglesworth was a man of great faith. When he showed up, a cloud of glory showed up. God did the work. It wasn't him. And Brother Benny Hinn's services. What happens? People are healed and delivered. Right out in the audience. <laughs> they come in, somebody prays with them. It increases their faith of the prayer. Right? Puts them in position to receive. Many of them get healed and delivered. Everybody get it? Now don't get me wrong. Sometimes there's a struggle, isn't there? Sometimes there's a struggle, and there may be a struggle. And there's reasons why some people don't get delivered all the way. And sometimes you might have to yell, Hey, come out in the name of Jesus. What are you doing? You're actually increasing the individual's faith when you're doing it, because he's saying, Yes! <laughs> Yes. 
Does everybody get it? <laughs> He's the one going, yeah, I hear that. Come on. Burn me. <laughs> it's not you. It says, we will cast them out. But I'm going to show you how and what Jesus was doing. So man, we, we, we need to get out of this stuff that these gifts are ours. Amen. We need to get out of this that tongues is yours and mine. They're not ours. We're nothing. We need to just get out of the way. If you're a believer, you're required to deliver. You're to deliver goods you're to be the witness and walk just like Christ. Jesus said, I don't do, I don't do anything. Jesus declared it too. I only do what I see my Father do. <laughs> so now you and I must see what Jesus does. And what He does, we're going to do because He's going to do the work. <laughs> it ain't us. Now the devils are going to see Jesus in you. Does everybody get it? That's why the demon said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? Right? And when the Sadducees and Pharisees tried to cast out the devil, it didn't work. They got their butts kicked. Because they didn't see Jesus in them. And what increases Jesus? Your faith. Why do you think you and I have communion? So we can maintain faith. Did you ever notice that when you don't pray for a while, you lose faith. It's faith that's the connection between you and God. It's faith that's the connection between the heart of God and the hand of God. So you're to be a walking vessel of faith. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Matthew 12. Now what does fasting do? It denies yourself. Now doesn't a word say deny yourself daily, pick up your cross and follow. Now, doesn't the word say that those who follow or believe me, these signs will follow them? Signs don't follow until you deny yourself. Now some people don't need to fast like that to deny themselves. Amen. Matthew 12. Can you imagine you see a demon-possessed individual He's crying out for help. Uh oh, man, I ain't fasted for a while. Man, what am I going to do? Hey, look it, can you hold on for 24 hours? See, you know what that's saying? It's you. You're saying it's you. You're playing God now. That ain't you. Oh, man, I didn't pray in the Holy Ghost for two hours this morning. I can't do this. Oh, since when it's you anyways. <laughs> if you've been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and you stay filled with the Holy Ghost, it's not you. And the demons will know that. But you've got to understand something. They're trying to disqualify you. If they can disqualify you, they got you. Believe me, if they can disqualify you once, they can do it twice. Hello? So you can't let it happen. You have to overcome that fear. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. Wow. A sound mind is a mind of Christ. A sound mind is looking at the things in the spirit, not the things in the natural. There is no double-mindedness. There is no doubt. There is no unbelief. There is no lack of faith. There is trusting in Him that He is the Deliverer, not you. That's why God sent Moses with a rod. 
<laughs> he gave him something to hold on to. Remind him. You know what that rod was? Faith. <laughs> Faith is what? A substance, isn't it? He was holding on to a rod of faith, man. You don't think his knees were knocking every time he let that rod go? <laughs> this probably, he probably had handprints in that rod. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Matthew 12, I guess. Is that where we are? In verse 28, read it with me, please. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit. Huh? Wait a minute. This is Jesus, the Christ, who is God, who is saying, listen, I'm not casting out the demons. I'm casting them out by the what? Spirit of God. Wow. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So you must get out of the way. It's not you. Deliverance can be very simple sometimes. It doesn't mean that you have to grab the person by the head and twist them. Or shake him upside down. Or shake him like a salt pepper shaker. <laughs> deliverance, most of the time, deliverance comes in gentleness, in love. Jesus was the God of love. He is the God of love. That's all you need to do is sit down and talk to someone and pray with them. Does everybody get it? It's real simple sometimes. And I'm not saying sometimes you've got to fight. The only reason why you have a fight is because there's resistance there. And it's not always from the devil, it's from the individual. So Jesus went around casting out demons by what? Spirit. The Spirit of God. Hmm. Ooh. Not by you. He's the one who's casting them out. Now he's in you, right? That's why you're using his name in the name of Jesus. It's not in the name of Guy or Fred or whoever. It's in the name of Jesus. You're not doing the casting out. Jesus by the Spirit of God is doing the casting out. What are you doing? You're acknowledging the name of Jesus. You're making connection between your circumstance and the hand of God. Does everybody get it? That's what the name of Jesus brings. Him. You know what it does? It moves you out of the way. <laughs> Cast, that's what the Pharisees tried to do. They tried to say, well, we're casting out these devils uh, out of the name of the God of Paul. They didn't mention the name of Jesus, did they? They named Paul. <laughs> and the demon said, you boneheads, I'm going to kick your blessed assurance. Jesus, we know Paul, we know, but who are you? Do you understand that? So when you go representing you, you're in trouble. When you go representing Christ, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Because it's not you. Let's go to verse 43. While we're here. Hallelujah. In verse 43, let's read it. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, that means he's been cast out, he goes to dry places seeking rest and finds none. 
Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Why? Because the demons are gone. But you can be guaranteed that he's going to come back. This is where an individual must stay right before God. Anybody can get delivered. And anybody can get demonized again. Amen? Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first, so that it also be with this wicked generation. So we understand that in us are rooms. Does everybody get it? There are seven rooms. I had revelation today on some stuff. I didn't think about that till later. Praise God. Well, what happened? It was powerful. <laughs> but there are seven rooms. And you know what? When a demon comes back, the one thing he likes to do is place corruptible seeds. Mm. <laughs> Even when he goes, unless you take care of those seeds, they'll grow. Hello? How? Well, in the Spirit, you got to know these things. See, that sometimes there's even dormant spirits that haven't been activated yet. They're there. They're hiding. They're just waiting. They perk up every once in a while. But they're there. And you can tell a demon by its fruit. Certain motives, certain things. You can tell a demon. So we see here that even when someone gets delivered from demonic activity, you can be 100% guaranteed that that devil is going to try to come back and access himself because he claims that house is his. In fact, these demons fight over each other, over you. Praise God. So they always try to come back and there is no guarantee that you won't pick up another devil. Does everybody understand that? There's no guarantee. The only thing is is that you must keep yourself filled up and stay right with God. And let me tell you, you're going to still pick one up. The thing is, is you've got to learn to shake them off. You just don't want to give them a place to stay. It's a terrible thing when they come and don't pay rent. <laughs> but there are ways to stay free. Does everybody understand that? Yes. There are ways to stay free. In Genesis 3. You know, before Moses beca could become a deliverer, he had to be delivered. And you know what he learned? To trust God. To fellowship with God. To stay in that place. And then God gave him a rod. A rod of faith. Glory to God. But you have the Holy Ghost to stir you up. You have the shield of faith. You have the gift of faith. I mean, praise be to God. In Genesis 3, in verse 1, 1 through 3. Is everybody there? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. I think that's pretty simple. The devil is the most cunning beast God created. You're not dealing with a dummy. He knows exactly how to access. Does everybody get it? He accesses through that soulish realm. Why? Because they love to feed off of that. Well, where's the fight at? In the mind, right? 
And once he's activated your will, you open the door, he comes in. When you say, okay, there he is. Now the serpent was the most cunning beast um, God created. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of the, every tree of the garden? First mistake the woman, it was a commune with him. He was planting a what? A corruptible seed. Does everybody get it? And you know what he did? He watered it. <laughs> and the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you what? Touch it, lest you what? So she even went beyond eating it. That means God told her more than once because she couldn't lie. She didn't know what lying was. She said, you can't even touch it. Do you understand? She touched it already. She had to fall. Even though she made confession that she couldn't touch it, but she touched it. How? By communing with it. She touched it. She accepted what the serpent was saying. Or she wouldn't have given an answer back. She touched it. So what happens is we can touch unclean things by people, by places, and by things. Amen? Leviticus 19. Hold on. Second Corinthians, I think, 6. Let's go there first. Hallelujah. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Second Corinthians 6, 17. Is everybody there? Read it with me. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. What's separate mean? Sanctified. Does everybody get it? And do not what? Touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Well, when you touch something that's unclean, what happens? Amen. You become separated from Him. And I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us what? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the what? Flesh and spirit. Why? Because the soul must be renewed, perfecting in holiness and the fear of God. Does everybody get it? So you and I cannot touch things that are unclean to people, places, and things because it opens the door to demonic activity. Leviticus 19. Oh, to God be the glory. In verse 31, let's read it together. Everybody there? It says what? Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Wow, you want to have trouble? Hang around with a familiar spirit. And do not seek after them to be what? Defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Wow. Go to Leviticus 20 in verse 6 and read it with me. And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them, I will set my fate against that person and cut him off from his people. Wow. And verse 7, read it. Consecrate yourselves or be sanctified, right? Therefore, and be holy, for I am holy your God. For I am the Lord, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Wow. So you got to be careful with who you fellowship with and the boundaries. Go to Isaiah 8. You know, people have a lot of problems because beginning to associate with familiar spirits and don't even know it. <laughs> yes, Isaiah 8. Familiar spirits produce granolas. They're nutty and fruity. I know God can be strange sometimes, but let me tell you, these familiar spirits are real strange sometimes. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 8 and verse 19, read it with me. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? You know how many people are running to people for a word instead of the throne room of God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? <laughs> to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Praise God. Deuteronomy 18. Do, do, Deuteronomy. You know when 
in my, in my younger days, in my relationship with the Lord, in my fellowship with the Lord, the Lord had to force me to go see somebody. I begged him. I said, Lord, I don't need to go see no prophet. I can hear you. He said, son, I want you to go. I said, all right. And I did. I got a word from the Lord. I already knew. I said, okay. Does everybody get it? If you have fellowship with the Lord, you don't need to be running for a word. He's going to tell you exactly what you need. If you're in that place, God will bring it to you. <laughs> Does everybody get it? He knows exactly what you need. He'll bring it to you. And there isn't anything that greater than to bring it to you Amen. through Him Amen. than through somebody else. Amen. Does everybody get it? There's much more encouragement to know that you heard from God yourself than from somebody else having to tell you. Now, don't get me wrong. The only reason why people tell you is if you have that relationship with Him, you're going to get confirmation. Yeah, I know already. Listen, let me give you an example. Elijah and Elijah. Every time Elijah was following Elijah, every place he went to, the, pro the sons of the prophet would come out and say, Hey, your master is going to leave you. He said, I know. Shut up. They didn't have to tell him. He already knew. Amen? Amen? You didn't have to tell me this stuff like you're giving me a word from the Lord. I already know. Does everybody get it? You know what? You and I need encouragement. We need encouragement through the Spirit of God with a personal relationship. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you can't get it from an individual through the Spirit. Does everybody get it? But there isn't anything greater than getting it firsthand. Amen? You and Him. You and Him. Dreams. Visions. I'm telling you, the Lord made me go see this prophet. And then you know what happened? A few weeks later, a brother in Christ says, Come on, I'm going over there to see this prophet again. You want to go? No. Come on. All right, I went with him. He, and the guy gave me a word and I knew it wasn't for my father. Isn't it well? And I knew it wasn't for my daddy. I had to shake the dust up and curse the corruptible seed. You know why? Because I went without being directed by my father. Deuteronomy 18. Okay, look at verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a source or soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, a one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispose, or dis, what's it? Dispossess. Thank you. Listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren, him you shall hear. According to all you desired of the Lord your God in Herod, and in the day of the assembly, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire any more, lest I die. So we understand that you and I are not to seek mediums. Let me share this with you. I was, um, I was at an event where there were many prophets, many powerful men and women of God. And uh, I was brought there by a powerful woman of God. My wife and I were brought to this place. We were out of town. And the woman was so excited about us being there that she wanted us to get, a, get us a word from the Lord. So she saw one of her pro prophet friends and, and brought him over to the table. And we sat down and, he, he, and she said, would you give them a word from the Lord? And the guy's wife brought a word for my wife. And I knew I had such a witness in my spirit. I knew that it was for her. And so he was getting ready to give me a word. And I shut my eyes and I saw this white body in the background of me walk up to this man and bend over and speak to him. And I, you know, I'm thinking, well, angel of light, cool. And the Lord says to me, do you want to hear a word from me or from that familiar spirit? And I said, what do I do? And he said, bind it. And the man was holding down my hand and I turned my head and said, I bind you, familiar spirit, in the name of Jesus. You know? And I kept binding and binding now. And the man couldn't give me a word. And he said to me, squeeze my hand tighter. I said, Lord, what's me squeezing his hand tighter? got anything to do with a word. And he said to me, he ain't going to give you a word. Do you understand? You open a door to a familiar spirit, you get in trouble. You can ex when you accept that word from a familiar spirit, you accept a familiar spirit. 
and you get sucked up in the soulish realm of emotion and you become granola. Does everybody get it? When you accept a word from a familiar spirit, you accept the spirit. God is not granola. He is divine order. He's upright and true. He sets things straight. He speaks things right. He doesn't glorify the soul. He strengthens the spirit. And we must understand this. It's a part of our training and learning. Does everybody get in? It's so important. He doesn't puff you up. He straightens you up. Amen. First <laughs> Corinthians 2. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 2 is just for me and you. Oh, First Corinthians chapter 2. Yeah. I'm telling you, I can only share these things because of the experiences God has brought me through. And, and I've accepted some of these familiar spirits at times, and I've had my own troubles. I began to hang around a bunch of granolas, and they were nothing but nutty and fruity, and no work was being done. Everybody was chasing goosebumps in the wind, and there was no work being done. To God be the glory. The wind is blowing. <laughs> I was at an event one day, and they said, man, the fire of God is in here. I looked up, the event was shut. I said, man, somebody needs to open this vent and let the air conditioning flow. Another granola behind the pulpit. They were telling me it was the fire of God. Everybody was going, woo! I'm like going sweating. I'm going, something right in this place. It was in a room that we were in. Anyways, thank God be the glory. And Mom was with me. Her and I, when I said to her, I said, Mom, look! The vent is shut. It's so hot in this place. It's ridiculous. Everybody's sweating like mad. And they're calling it the fire of God. And I finally got fed up and went up there and turned the vent open. I said, man, you know, hey. No, it's not the fire of God. It's called, let's get some air conditioning in this place. And they're all going, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's not my daddy. In verse 14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually discerned. And you must be able to spiritually discern. Why? Because you are called to be a deliverer. Amen? Amen? Oh, oh, this is good. You ready for this? Yep. Hold on to your seat. Remember, the Holy Spirit is given to us not to uh, perpetuate feelings or exploit feelings. He's given to us to enable us to fight the devil in faith. That's why He's given to me and you. He's not given to me and you to chase the wind and goosebumps. He's given to me and you to turn around and kick butt on the devil. He's given for service and for war. Everybody get it? So if you're just not feeling right, or if you're feeling right, it's got nothing to do with the power of God. Hallelujah. Does everybody get it? Believe me, I could tell you many services when I was not feeling good at service. And I was in tremendous pain. And I'm praying for somebody else to get healed. And they got healed. It had nothing to do with me. I just stepped out in faith. I was still waiting for my healing. God is not the God of feeling. He's the God of truth. Yes, it's truth that sets people free. It's feelings that bring them into captivity. Desires are feelings, aren't they? Don't get me wrong. The greatest feeling that you can I can have is peace. <laughs> it's peace that surpasses all understanding. Not goosebumps, wind, or no air conditioning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Matthew 7. Praise be to God. Now listen, don't get me wrong. People can shake and quake under the power of God, you know. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. Let me tell you. But I'll tell you what happened with me when the power of God threw me off of my couch and I was flipping, flapping like a fish out of water. One of the things the Lord said to me is, lay hands on them. Don't run from them. He said, lay hands on them and impart the thirst for the lost. Manifestations are not given for self-edification. Does everybody get it? Let me tell you, if, if the power of God is manifesting on you, it's a wonderful thing. But if it's the power of God manifesting on you, when you pray for someone, they should be healed. If it's the power of God. But if it's your flesh... Ain't nothing going to happen. In Matthew 7, verse 16. Somewhere around there. Verse 13. Answered by the narrow gate for what? Why does the gate to Granolaism? <laughs> and, broad, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in it by it. Everybody wants to be so spiritual. We need to just be who we are. Jesus paid the price for us. Does everybody get it? 
God is no respecter of person. The only reason why he shows favor more with others is because they seek him more and get more favor. That's all. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing and inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their what? Amen. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Everyone who, even so, every good tree bears good fruit and every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. I'm telling you, I've run into people that are supposed to be so spiritual, they're home waiting on God. And they ain't doing nothing. They're not doing anything. They go to services, they go to Bible studies, they go, but they're not doing anything. Yes, I've been following God for 40 years. Where? In your living room? What are you doing? You know, there are some, let me tell you something. You can fast and pray and fast and pray and fast and pray, but you can't go out and serve. You're too weak. Does everybody get it? In fact, even... um, Now, don't get me wrong. Don't take this out of contents. I'm not saying fast and praying is wrong. There are people who fast a meal or fast every other day or whatever. But some people are just constantly fasting and they're waiting on God and expecting God's hand to move because of their fast. He doesn't move because of your fast. He moves because of your faith. Does everybody get it? In fact, Elijah, I think it was Eli, no, Elijah, who was running from Jezebel, was on a fast. Mm -hmm. Finally, the angel had to show up to him and say, look it, eat, you got a long journey. <laughs> he had to show up to him twice and say, eat, you got a long journey. Because he knew he wasn't getting anywhere. He couldn't do it by fasting. Do you understand that? He had to eat. Hallelujah. My goodness, if you had to fast for everyone you prayed, you wouldn't be able to make it to their house. Hallelujah. So you know them by their fruit, right? There's too much soulish ministry. Not enough spirit ministry. Ephesians 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I was, I, I, I was given some tapes about a powerful man of God that fasts every other day. And he's been doing it for years. But he, he eats one day and fasts the next day. And he raises people from the dead and does all kinds of stuff. But it's not him. It's the hand of God that does it. Does everybody get it? It's not him. But God has put him, put him in a position in a jungle-like where he's out ministering to Indians and so forth, where nobody's at. God has enabled him to fast every other day because it's been ordained by the Lord. Jesus went and fasted 40 days because it was ordained by the Lord. There are people out there fasting 40 days and wondering why ain't nothing happening because it ain't been ordained by God. Jesus allowed the people to fast for three days. And what did he say? Feed them. I have compassion on them. I don't want them to go away hungry. Daniel fasted 21 days. What did he do? He ate vegetables and drank water. Some people are hurting themselves because it's not directed by God. Ephesians 4 and verse something. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 25, Therefore putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one body. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the... So we're not supposed to give place to the devil, are we? Or to shut everything. Amen? First Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 5. Is everybody there? And I got a bunch more scriptures. I don't think I'm going to be able to get in. But to God be the glory, I think the point has been put across already. First Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Let's read it. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. In other words, spiritual discernment. Be sober. means stay awake. Jesus told his disciples, pray and watch lest you fall into temptation. That's called sober. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Right? 
don't be pushed over. Because you're what? Adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It says resist him steadfast in the what? In the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brethren in the world. In 1 Timothy, I think it's 1 Timothy. No, 2 Timothy. Chapter 4, verse 1. It says, uh, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter days many will fall from the faith. Taking heed to who? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Those are known as a deceiving spirit as a familiar spirit. Amen? People start up their own religions. Who started out being believers. All of a sudden they go to another doctrine. They walk around barking like dogs. That's God. Whatever it may be. You know what I'm saying? What they're doing is they're opening the doors to familiar spirits. And the work is not getting done. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Um, the Bible tells us that we we'll resist the devil and he will what? That's in James 4, 7. But remember, we must submit unto who? God. God. Go to verse... Uh, verse. <laughs> Praise God. 1 John chapter 5. And verse 17. Everybody there? Let's read it. All unrighteousness and sin... And there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does what? Not touch him. Let me tell you something. When you touch something unclean, the wicked one has access to touch you. So we're to keep ourselves what? Clean. Amen? John chapter 9. So we know that sin in deliverance Confession activates the blood of Jesus. Conf the Bible says, Confess your sins to one another that you may be prayed for and be healed. Amen. So we know that sins must be confessed. Amen. <clears throat> and John 9, 1 through 3. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples answered him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Now his parent. Now these guys knew about ancestral curses. And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Well, so they knew, didn't they? I must work the works of him who what? Sent me. Wow. I must work the works of who? Him who sent me. Not he himself. While it is day, the night is coming when no one can... Work. Hallelujah. So these were sins of the forefathers that were passed down, weren't they? Go to Exodus 20. That's why we have deliverance prayers. You know, the first thing that when a new convert comes into a ministry, depending uh, a belief, uh, uh, somebody who just received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they need to go through deliverance. They need to get freed up. <clears throat> Amen. But there is a way of deliverance too. Everyone is handled individually. You can't fray, uh, scare the bejeebies out of somebody. What you've done is remove devils and imparted fear. <laughs> Does everybody get it? So it must be done according to the way of the Spirit. And most of the time it's in meekness and gentleness. And if that don't work, take authority. <laughs> Amen? But there must be a willing participant. No one's going to get delivered that doesn't want to be delivered. Amen. You can't force deliverance on anybody. Amen. That's why people are giving those deliverance prayers. So that they can begin to sow in. Because it's not an individual that's delivering you. It's God. 
you know, you remember when the uh, one one guy went to uh, uh, who was it, Elijah, to go get delivered, and Elijah wouldn't even come out, and, and he sent him in dirty water, the Jordan. He said, "Go dip yourself seven times, <laughs> and God will heal you." And he was expecting the man of God to come over and wave his hand over him, <laughs> you know, and something was going to happen. Well, God did it another way. He got delivered. Does everybody get it? He had a demon that brought leprosy. God delivered him and healed him. Could have been an ancestral curse, whatever it may be. Remember, demons, wherever something is cursed, it draws demonic activity. Anything that is cursed, the devil has a right to be there. Does everybody get it? So don't you think the devil would like you to bring self-imposed curses? Then he has a right to be there. And then we need to have deliverance. How? Repentance. Amen? And Exodus 20. Is everybody there? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Exodus 20 and verse 5 and 6. Read it with me, please. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For the, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. That's from 80 to 100 years past. But showing mercy to the thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Praise be to God. Amen. So we see that now these curses are gateways to demons. Why? Because of our rebellious ancestors. Okay? These curses have been brought down to me and you. So we need to break them off. What do we need to do? We need to repent for their sins. Not only your own sins, but for their sins. Some of these things have brought physical abnormalities because of combinations of genes that have been brought down that have been cursed. Does everybody get this? Some have brought uh, emotional and spiritual weaknesses in their life. Do you ever speak to someone that you can't say nothing to? They begin to weep and cry no matter what you try and tell them. That's how ancestral curses brought down the line. Certain things that have been brought down. Certain people are just so rebellious they won't receive nothing. That's demonic activity because rebellion is witchcraft and it's been brought down the line. Why? From ancestral curses. People have diabetes, heart disease, and so forth. Those are ancestral curses. Even asthma is brought down the line. Many sicknesses are brought down the line. And people are trying to fix it in the natural realm, but the natural realm can't fix it. The only thing that can heal them is through the power of God. Amen? Now let me share with you things that prevent deliverance. Pride stops deliverance. Wrong motives. Unrepentant heart. Unforgiveness. Not being totally truthful and unwilling. 